An interesting rechargeable light I found on eBay and it's not quite what I was expecting so let's give you the full unboxing experience here. It comes as a pack of two of these bulbs. It comes with two USB-C charging leads, the lights themselves and a pair of remote controls. Okay, I shall put one of these out of the way because we only need one to demonstrate its functionality. Now initially, when I got these, I thought that one of the options was it could screw into a lamp holder and then just recharge the lamp holder but turns out this is just magnetic and there's a little hinge down hook so this isn't electrically active it's simply so that you can recharge this light and then you can put it into an existing light fitting with its uh, edison screw holder and it doesn't need plugged in so you could choose say for instance you a, a wedding banquet type thing comes to mind you could choose your preferred Light fittings the tail, just cut the flex off, and you could screw these in, in place the bulb, and then it would be basically wireless light on the table. But anyway, let me demonstrate this. There is a button on the side. Have I, re have I charged these? Hmm. Oh, double click. Double click did it. Uh, double click goes to uh, neutral white and then cold white. Okay, and then... Oh, so a single click turns them on and off. Pressing and holding it changes modes. That's pulse with modulation, which is why it's flickering. Anyway, yes, I think we get the gist. Right. I don't think there's any screws. I think it's all going to be through the top, so let's just open it. Oh, actually, do you know what I should have done? I should have tried the remote, shouldn't I? That would have been good, right? Tell you what, so... On. Oh, that works. Uh, 3000K, 4000K, 6000K, uh, nightlight mode, which seems a po popular type of mode. And it stays in that mode. <laughs> right, okay. How do you increase intensity? There's the intensity increase button. Uh, and then you get a selection of colors. Flicker, flicker. Um, Right. And then various sort of colour sequencing effects or uh, transition effects. Right, OK, we've seen enough. Turn it off. Let's open it. Let's try not to push the button again. What do we have? Let's uh, get the circuit board. Well, we'll tell you what. We can start by taking a look at the main light source board. Is that in focus? It's definitely not in focus up here. But it will be now down here. Oh, maybe not. Hold on. Let me just uh, let me just screw everything up here. Right. Okay. That's fine. We can zoom down now. Very quirky focus in this system. Um, also very quirky zoom on this system, which is why I pause momentarily when I'm zooming these days. So we've got an infrared receiver. We've got the RGB LEDs, which are low intensity just for visual effect. And then we've got the cold white and the warm white LEDs alternated around the outside. And when you choose the appropriate color, let's uh, switch around, you get either uh, the warm white in their own. <laughs> that didn't work. Double click. Uh, both for the intermediate color or the cold white in its own. Excellent. Right, I shall take this circuit board out and we'll see what else is underneath. And the last screw to reveal, is it going to be two circuit boards permanently connected together or is it going to be separate? It's, oh no, they are. Look, it's uh, the only connections are off onto an 18650 lithium cell, which conveniently, oh, there's a magnet. <laughs> Uh, which conveniently just plugs onto the circuit board. That's quite handy, he said, trying to get it off, and it didn't come off. Right, tell you what then. Um, I shall take a picture of this, and we'll reverse engineer the circuitry. Look at this over here. Oh, that is the LED drivers. Okay. Righty ho. I'm going to guess. There's a microcontroller. That will be the charge control chip. Um, and then these, these are the drivers for the LEDs, right? Let's see if my guess is correct. One moment, please.
Okay, let's explore, and we'll start with the LED side first. We've got the infrared sensor, which it turns out is active all the time. So it also turns out the lithium cell has built-in protection, which is good because the standby current of this is 200 microamps or 0.2 milliamps. So it will gradually drain that cell down till it cuts out. We have 12 of cold white, 12 of warm white, and we have the four RGB 5050 LEDs. And it's worth mentioning that if you choose the standard primary colors at the standard full intensity, it's about 300 milliamps between all four LEDs, so roughly 75 milliamps per LED package. And when you do choose combination colors like cyan or magenta, it, uh, it does share that current, but it's still quite a lot of dissipation from each so let's take a look at the main circuit board now. And here it is. Things worthy of note. It's USB-C. It does have the little resistors there for telling it that it is a load and to apply power. It's got a couple of indicator LEDs associated with the standard 4056 charge chip. It's got a 1.5K program resistor for that. And then that charges the cell which is plugged into this connector with its protection. The microcontroller here and the infrared have a little 47 ohm resistor and capacitor decoupling arrangement, but there are also resistor positions unoccupied here, which are designed to allow the chip to know when it's plugged in and charging, but they've not actually put those in. The drive side has a couple of transistors down here for cold white and warm white, and they've got two 4.7 ohm resistors, but they do have the option to put in three resistors to fine-tune the current and the dissipation. And they've got the same for the, uh, the cold white. Then we've got the red, green, and blue. And the two outer resistors, the two ohm are for the green and blue, and then we've got two 8.2 ohm resistors in parallel because the red has a lower uh, voltage drop. So more is dissipated across the resistors. So they've used uh, two resistors to spread the dissipation. And it's also worth mentioning they've used standard NPN transistors, Y1, but they've used uh, 10K pull-down resistors on the base suggesting that they also allowed this to use MOSFETs if they desired, because it's not normal that you find uh, the pull-down resistors, because it's not so much needed because the uh, the base of a standard NPN transistor actually poses that slight load. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic. And here it is. So there is the USB-C port. There are the two resistors that signal via the CC pins that it is a load. We've got a decoupling capacitor. We've got the 1K resistor for the two LEDs, which I didn't colour in. Normally colour them in. I feel the need to colour them in now. Uh, one moment, please. Done. Red and blue. There's the programming resistor that sets the charge current. And here's the lithium cell, which it does turn out has protection. I unpeeled the cover off one of the cells to find that out because the circuitry itself does potentially pose the risk of over-discharging the cell. And when it, these arrived, they wouldn't power up until charged. And that's purely because they had cut out on the protection of the cell. So the cell is rated 3000 milliamp power. Do we believe that? Well, we'll find out. And you can find out in the description down below because it's going to take hours to test because I fully charged the cell and it is now being discharged at a rate of 500 milliamps. So it's going to take about six hours to do that test. If it is, I'm going to go and check that right now. It has not been on long enough. It's currently showing uh, about 580 milliamp hour and it's down to 3.85 volts. So there is potential for it to have a fairly good capacity, more than 2 amp hour anyway. So here is the supply rail from that cell. It can vary from the point it cuts out 2.5 volts to 4.2 volts. And there is the decoupling resistor and the little capacitor here that provides a stable supply to the infrared receiver, which has its own extra decoupling capacitor locally, and the microcontroller. It's worth mentioning that quite often they'll power the infrared receiver from an output pin in the microcontroller so that it can actually kind of put it to sleep after a while and just wake it and briefly look to see if there's any infrared activity. But in this case, it's just running all the time. So the quiescent current is 0.2 milliamps, which is quite high. I did leave it for a while, wonder if it would go down to a lower level, but it didn't. It just stayed at that. But maybe I didn't leave it long enough. Who knows? Then we've got five transistors in the output. The resistors, 
They've got a 10k pull down the resistor on the base of each of these Y1 NPN transistors. And uh, then for the red, green, blue, there's a 1k resistor because it's lower current. And uh, because they want to basically turn the transistor on a bit harder for the higher currents, uh, the warm white and cold white 510 ohm resistors to the base. Then there are the resistors to the LEDs. We've got 4.1 ohm for red, 2 ohm for green, 2 ohm for blue, uh, 2.35 ohm for cold white, and 2.35 ohm for the warm white. Um, and uh, I did test the currents. It, they're quite high. Uh, I'll put them down in the description down below. But spoilers, uh, at full power, the warm white and cold white were about 400 milliamps. And when you set, the, it only has three intensity steps, uh, high, medium, and low. And it goes down to about 70 milliamps at the lowest setting and about, say, 175 for the mid setting. The red, green, blue LEDs also have that, but the current is typically, I would guess it's the same divider, really. I should test that. But anyway, I shall put that information in the description down below. Oh, there is also, incidentally, it's got the nightlight mode and it's got the uh, police mode. You can select the police mode and it will start strobing like police lights, red and blue, doing all the patterns, which is useless. The heart uh, ramps up and down, uh, changing colour each time. And then we get fast colour, random colour transitions or fixed colour. It's going through a sequence. And then we get the soft fade between them and uh, the fixed colours. It's a basic enough light. It's interesting enough. Um very functional as it is and as I say it would be quite good for an event where you only needed it lit for a few hours and you wanted to have the option of using infrared one should do them all uh, to activate the lights in the middle of the tables using standard light fittings but there we have it uh, it's an interesting enough light I shall continue testing things um, and then give you the full results in the description down below. That will include the, the capacity of the lithium cell and also the currents of the LEDs at the different settings, the different modes. Oh, incidentally, if you do change the intensity, and you can do it from the unit, uh, even without the remote, you can uh, press and hold. Just one click turns it on. Double click changes the color mode, and it just basically does cold white, warm white, uh, neutral white, and then it does uh, color cycling. But um, if you're in warm white and cold white, you can press and hold, and you can actually dim it down to a low level. Um, and then if you turn it off with a single click at that point, when you click it again, it will come on at that setting. But there we have it. I shall provide a link to these, although the listing that I got them from, it's quadrupled the price. I think they're just basically, it's they're keeping the listing awake. And other ones were double the price that I paid. Wonder why. But there we have it. An interesting rechargeable light that can be screwed into other fittings just purely as a holder and not actually for power. Quite a novel approach.